The Experience Pros Radio Show, home of the original Fan Bragging Fridays. Take just 20 seconds to become a revolutionary by sharing a Fan Bragging story of great customer service on Facebook.com slash Experience Pros. Now, back to Angel and Eric, the Experience Pros. And just telling your story so that it gets heard, understood, and remembered sometimes feel like Mission Impossible. And Jerry Brown of Jerry Brown PR can help. Jerry's here on the Experience Pros Radio Show at this time every week with a tip to help you tell your story. Welcome back, Jerry. What's our storytelling tip this week? Well, thanks. It's great to be here. And, you know, I often describe what I do as helping people get their story heard, understood, and remembered. And so I thought I would talk today a little bit about how uh, people listening to the to this segment can do that for themselves, how they can get their story heard, understood. Which is a huge, really important part of, of being, you know, type of mind, because when your customer needs you, you want it to be you that they need, right? Absolutely. And, and, and remember, and you know, when I say that about getting heard, understood, and remembered, sometimes I think people just look at that and think, well, you know, so what? But, you know, it has actually become a little more complicated than it once was. You know, back in, I can remember the day when if you got a story into the local newspaper, it was going to get read all over town by almost, you know, I mean, everybody read, the, or not necessarily everybody read that paper, but a lot of people. And if you advertised on one of the local TV stations or in the local paper, you kind of blanketed your local community. And now it's become harder to do that because we have, uh, well, first of all, people don't read newspapers as much. They don't watch uh, right. as much local television. They have a zillion cable TV channels. They have the internet. They have video games. They have all kinds of other um, entertainment or information, things that we just didn't have. And so the audience has become fragmented. Right. And so if you want to have, if you want to get your story heard, the first thing you've got to do is figure out who you're trying to talk to and then where am I, where, where of all those many zillions of places that they can spend their time, are, are they likely to be hanging out? Because you need to understand it. You need some strategy around where you're going to try to place your message. Okay, let's break this down just a little bit. You, you talk about we need to find out who we're going to talk to. Is that our ideal customer? Is that, is that what you're talking about? Or, or is it maybe uh, somebody else? It can be whoever you want to talk to. I mean, I, that's really a choice that uh, whoever is... Because it's not always about our target client. It's sometimes it's the audience we want to reach for a message. Absolutely. I, I mean, there are... Um, I mean, if you want to get really into micro... Greens? Not no no targeting. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to get into the family fight here, oh. but um, I, you know I know of cases where um, you know in the political world, uh, political campaigns work to f- place stories in newspapers around the country because they have an audience of one, which is the congressman from that locality. That is micro. And so they you know they want the story in there because they want that congressman to know that that story is getting local play. Yeah. And so they want the rest of us to read it. But they care about uh, that congressman knowing that it's getting local play, people pressuring it. So uh, your audience is somebody you have to decide. It may be your ideal ma- uh, customer or it may be prospective customers. It may be whoever, but that's something you have to decide. But then you have to figure out how am I going to best do that? Now, right. the nice thing about it is that you have things, you know, you have uh, uh, channels that you used to not have back in the days when there were, you know, a local or two new local newspapers and two or three television stations. You have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have blogs, you have email and the opportunity to do newsletters and things that, that weren't readily available back then. But you have to figure out who you are. And then more important you know, we're bombarded by thousands of messages a day. Right. Your, what, no matter how important you think it is, your message is, for the rest of us, just one of those thousands of messages that are going to cross by us that day. And so unless you make it interesting enough for us to pay attention, even though it may go by us, we won't hear it. And so the, the, the getting heard of your message is really about figuring out what your strategy is for communicating with the rest of us, both in terms of how to reach us and how to reach us in a way that we'll care. How, how do you do I mean, Angel and I have said, uh, don't don't uh, communicate a message that's more than 11 words long. Uh, that may or may be kind of insane, but you know, for people who talk on the air for hours a day. Uh, but how do you how do you get that message to that point? Uh, you make it personal. You make it relevant to my audience, uh, to, or to your audience. You know, 
Um, any of you familiar with Seth Godin? Um, oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, sure. Well, you know, he talks about how, you know, because of all these messages, a lot of marketers just try to shout louder or make things more edgy. And his point is that, you know, that just makes, that just raises the decibel level right. for everybody. But if you make it relevant and interesting to me, your audience, that's how you're going to get my attention. You know, you don't pay attention to the tire ads until you need new tires. Right. Um, and so it's the same with your audience. You've got to figure out, you know, don't talk about yourself. Talk about how you're going to help the people in your audience or why they care. Absolutely. And and keeping that, that message really simple and concise makes it easier for people to recall. I think they get muddled in the words sometimes. Absolutely. And I think that goes to the being understood part. I mean, you said don't use a message of more than 11 words. I say it a little differently, although I think it's the same thing. I say you got to be able to say your message in about 15 seconds. And the reason for that is, is that if you can't say it in 11 words or about 15 seconds or whatever, the reality is it's not clear enough in your own head that you really understand what it is. And if you don't understand what your message is, how are the rest of us going to understand? Oh, that's a good litmus test. Yeah, yeah. You know, I used to be a preacher. and uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah? Okay. There are preachers all over America Now you going, preach about microgreens. Right? Absolutely. Uh, but, but there's people sitting there saying, 15 seconds? I have an hour and a half to talk. And in many ta- cases... You should probably be, and my, my mentor used to say, if you can't say it in 20 minutes, uh, you, you don't need to say it over and over. Well, but the, and the reality is whether you're going to take an hour and a half or 20 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever to, to, for the whole thing, if you can't if you can't boil down the part that you want us to walk out remembering right. in about well, your 11 words or my 15 seconds or whatever it is, you, uh, the, the fact is that we may hear it, and as, as it's going along, it may all make sense. But when we're done listening and we walk away or you walk away or whatever, it's like, hmm, what? Right. This no. is where I think it's great to have that outside opinion that you provide to us, Jerry, that outside point of view. Because, again, it is our business. We kind of get lost. We don't we don't pull out, I think, those really important pieces of yep. it or we don't see the relevance of it because we live it every day. And you help bring that story back to a place where people are actually going to remember it. It actually, I think, is the most important part of what I do. You know, people are wanting to want to rush out immediately and start doing, you know, and right, th- throwing right. things out there. And in that part, that's the the liver and spinach part of the process, which is that you uh, spend some time figuring out what your strategy is, what your message is, who your audience is, all those things, and then a strategy for getting to them is really. The hard part, but it's also the important part. Okay, so we're heard, we're understood. How do we make sure that we're remembered? Okay, well, the, the, you know, one of the ways you're going to get remembered again is, is if you uh, just, you know, you say something that's important enough for me that uh, that I, I, I want to do something about it, whether I'm ready to do it now or I like to call it the refrigerator magnet test. Is it something that I would at least figuratively put on my refrigerator? Oh to like do something comics. with when I'm going to need it. Now, right, I may not right. literally do that, but figuratively speaking. So that's one way to make sure you remember it is just make it compelling enough that I say, oh, I need to hold on to that. You know, the other thing is is that um, um, visual things, like if you're putting anything on Facebook or in a blog or anywhere else, I mean, they can't do this on the radio except with Oh, word images, yeah, which you know, because radio than, is a very visual medium, but um, you know, make it visual because that helps. It helps um, us remember. And you know, the other thing is, um, abstract concepts are not as easy to remember as things that are concrete. And so, examples. We talked a few weeks ago about examples and uh, you know, a- analogies, um, anecdotes, and uh, and examples. If you can take, if you have an abstract message, then if you can figure out a way to make it concrete with examples, that can help us remember it as well. And of course, the simpler it is, the easier it is to remember. Amen. You know, the late journalist, screenwriter, and Denver native Gene Fowler once said, "Writing is easy. All you do is sit staring at a blank sheet of paper until drops of blood form on your forehead." Keep your forehead dry. Hire Jerry Brown of Jerry Brown PR to help you write your blog posts, social media postings, articles press releases, PowerPoint presentations, and more. He can also edit what you've already written. Jerry Brown at jerrybrownpr.com. Once again, you can reach Jerry at jerry at jerrybrownpr.com or by phone at 303-594-8016. That's 303-594-8016. We'll be right back after these messages. 
The experienced pros are here to help you get your business right. To learn more, visit experiencepros.com.